This is how you see how real my life was. This is what heroin ends up having you look like in the long run and the shit you have to go through. This is just another reminder why I don't want to shoot dope anymore. And I get a phone call one day, and it's Mike Valley. He said, you know, like, we have two options we can do with you. So the ultimatum's now on the table. Clean up or remove myself from the team. And something I worked so hard for since probably six years old, I didn't even have a full breath of air in my lungs before I said I'm done. That day, not only did I quit my sponsor, I quit caring, I quit believing, I quit having hope in anything. It was just so easy just to get high. A lot of those years, I didn't want to get high. A lot of those years, I wanted to stop. I, I, I had moved to Finland, I had moved to London, I had moved to Paris, I had moved all over the United States. I had changed women, I had changed homes, I had changed careers in hopes to rid me of the obsession or lift me of the desire to want to continuously get high and drink. And it did not work. Today and, and what I'm doing here, all it symbolizes is that Left to my own devices, I'm a self-willed run riot. I will destroy it all. My ego comes into play, and all my ego is, is easing God out. I've been in the ministry 40 years of my life in a different places. I came from LA, and that's where I sit with the Lord. And I'm very related to Brandon because uh, it was it was my life, and you know I did heroin for over 12 years. Being safe and being changed, it was a miracle for me and it was beautiful. And now seeing Brandon doing that, I mean, it's a rejoice. We're here today to honor Brandon Novak. He's going to be baptized. Uh, he is going to become a believer in Christ and baptism is a symbolization of that. It's an outward expression of an inward transformation. Tanae signifies in, in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old person is gone, the new has come. So he becomes a new, new creation, a new creature in Christ. So I think that that makes that that much different because you, you see someone that was completely broken in spirit, someone who was completely lost, and now he's found. Today's a day that I've been waiting for for, for quite some time, and I, I, I've envisioned it. I've told stories about it and, and talked about what I thought it would feel like to be baptized, and today is that day. Um, and, and it's near and dear to my heart for like a lot of reasons. At 35 years old, I found myself as, as a homeless heroin addict who, who, who lived on the streets of Baltimore City and, and I resorted to, to selling my body to get another bag of heroin. When I first got sober, the whole higher power aspect really didn't play a, a, a significant role in my sobriety. But the longer I stayed sober, what I've learned is that life is lived forward and learned backward. And I remember sitting in treatment and I had never felt so bad about myself. No one was talking to me. No one was calling and saying, how are you? What can we do for you? No one was saying, hey, can you put us on the visitation list so we can come see you? Nobody. And these outside speakers came in and they told their story one day. And the gentleman said, I have two things to say to you. If you're not happy with where you're at right now, I want you to take a look at who put you in that position. And the second thing he said was, if you're sitting in this room, if you're sitting in that chair and you're waiting for the miracle to happen, please allow me to tell you it's already taking place. Now at the time I couldn't see it. I, I couldn't realize what he meant by that because again, I was at a position where I was, uh, I just wanted to kill myself, but I didn't want to hurt myself in the process. I didn't pick my sobriety date. I didn't pick to be here getting baptized today. I merely came to the realization that I know that I don't know, but you guys seem to know, so can you help me? And for the first time in my life, I walked in with no plan. And that lack of plan has produced the best of plans. I know that I've tried to do it on my own, 
countless times, countless ways, with countless doctors, countless psychiatrists, and, and it's nothing shy of a miracle that I find myself sitting before you getting baptized today. Statistics state, theoretical evidence dictates that I am to be high or dead right now. you inside. I invite you inside. To be my God. To be my God. To be my Savior. To be my Savior. And to be my friend. And to be my friend. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. For I have decided this day. For I have decided this day. To follow you, Jesus. To follow you, Jesus. This day and forever. This day and forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God praise you now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's such a magical experience feeling the love of my heart. Because I was the guy that was deemed unhelpful or unfixable. To stand here today before you, with over four years of continual survival after receiving my first ever baptism in my higher powers home is the least that I could do. Uh, and, and my only hope is to, to pass this on to somebody else. It's just that I, I was that guy that couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. And I wanted to get it. I just couldn't because I couldn't get out of my own way. And I can tell you wholeheartedly, I've been sober over four years now, and I have not had a desire to drink a drug once in those four years. That doesn't prove that there's a power greater than myself that can do that for me. I don't know what it does. You know, so I'm just building up my armor to keep my conscious contact with my higher power. So if someone out there sees my testimonial today, my baptism take place, and they say, wow, that guy had that spiritual experience and he's sober over four years. Maybe I can have that spiritual experience and experience that freedom he possesses. <laughs>